they've got a new announcement now. Yeah, yeah, they they want uh, they don't want me to be able to do this uh, uh, surreptitiously. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. is uh, probably a, a good idea. Yeah, although uh, it says recording at the top. A changing rainbow. Wow, look at that. Okay, yeah, we, uh, we, we've seen this a, a lot. Um, I keep showing it. The, the point is uh, that early in world history, China and India really had their act together. Um, and uh, they were uh, very economically uh, uh, hardy. Um, so if you cut this off at the year 1500 uh, and you ask, well, who's going to emerge and be number one? Johnny, there's an echo. Somebody turn uh, mute, or mute your thing. Thank you. I think. Uh, no echo. Okay. Um, so if you stop this at 1500, if we all were back then, uh, 500 uh, uh, years ago, 600 years ago, who will um, emerge and be uh, number one um, in the future? And you'd say, well, it's uh, either going to be Ming, China, or India. Now, India at that time was being ruled by uh, Turks uh, um, and, uh, and Mongolian mixture, um, but uh, you'd, uh, you would have been wrong. In spite of all the plagues and famine and the Little Ages and the invasion of the Turks and the corruption of elites that we dealt with at the uh, uh, late Middle Ages with uh, the, uh, people dying in the plaza from uh, a pandemic, um, uh, neither China nor India emerged powerful. Um, it's going to be the rise of the West. And how, how did that happen? Well, you know, here are the six uh, realms that we've, we've always been trying to deal with, color-coded. Um, and what aspect of, of this allowed the West to, to do it? So um, in the case of India, uh, the reigning uh, realm was, was religion. Sure, look, in all places, th there's some violence and warlords and there's uh, uh, the uh, police have the monopoly of uh, violence. That's true uh, in, in any civilization. But when you look at the rise and fall of civilizations, what else was going on? And um, the power that was maintaining uh, the order was, in India was religious power, Hinduism. People bought into the caste system and, uh, fit, uh, and tailored their lives to fit into that. In China, uh, we, we see there over and over again, dynasties fall and emperors lose the mandate of heaven. But then things always seem to come together again in the um, uh, Mandarin, Confucian, uh, ethical uh, system, um, and the um, and, and so that's what we see in in those two um, uh, societies. But what was it that allowed the re uh, the West to uh, rise? We had already seen in the Middle Ages the growth of towns. Um, and the towns were given liberties and that increased trade and business and an increased wealth. We saw the emergence of uh, some political rights um, and guilds and, and uh, uh, aspects of uh, uh, being able to manage the risks of uh, business and quality control in, in the market. Um, and we saw the, the uh, emergence of a new uh, value. <laughs> Um, uh, that were distinctly less religious, uh, but, but were more individualistic, materialistic, um, the, the, the sort of environment where uh, 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 making a good product is, is, re is rewarded. Um, and so um, we saw this, just going back to my earlier graph, we saw the fall of, of re religion, the green line. And uh, remember, uh, they lost a lot of credibility because they seemed powerless against uh, the pandemic. 
um, uh, they, they were uh, becoming more and more corrupt. And when we get to them, uh, we'll certainly uh, talk about uh, that. Um, the management of uh, violence was shunted off in, into um, uh, parliaments, um, uh, places where, like particularly in, in England, the, the rise of the parliament. Uh, we saw the, the violence uh, being controlled by, by one mon, uh, uh, warlord, the monarch, mono, monarch, um, and uh, the building of, of, of a nation state. Uh, actually working working with towns. But down here we see the, the rise of trade and, and commerce and we see the rise of uh, scholarship. Um, and so what, what I've tried to do here is enlarge the realms that really made a huge difference in the Italian city-states. So um, uh, there, there was uh, uh, trade uh, rules, uh, informal though they may have been, and the, the guilds, and in particular the artisans, which is our destination. We're, we're, when, we're, when I'm done talking, we're going to yield the floor and talk about the, the amazing art that, that came out of the Italian um, uh, city-state. So, that we have for uh, Juan Jose another uh, dimension of what is civilization. Uh, yes, there, there were some uh, murmurings of uh, Republican uh, values, uh, relying on consent and votes and things like that. But um, uh, that it was fairly weak. And as uh, uh, Carol uh, taught us about uh, Milan um, uh, evolved into uh, an oligarchy as, as it did in most of the city states. So it's there, but it, uh, only in, in form. Uh, but what's amazing is the rise of, of uh, uh, intellectual thought and the revival of the Mediterranean tradition, make Italy great again, right? The, make, the Greek tradition of um, uh, study and, and science. Um, and uh, all these things come together. Um, there's no, no monarch or nation, just because one reason is uh, you had the Pope in Rome uh, as a, a countervailing uh, power. So there was no um, uh, uh, feeling of, of nationalism uh, uh, per se. Um, the church <laughs> uh, still existed, but it was far away and getting more and more uh, corrupt. And it was the towns and uh, guilds, the city states um, that evolved. Um, and in particular, you had these uh, institutions, uh, the, the banks uh, uh, being uh, 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 aiding the trade between cities as, as far north as um, uh, the Netherlands. Um, uh, and you had the, the establishment of, of hospitals, mostly uh, religious orders, but uh, there they are. And the emergence of a, a, a culture, a, a storytelling, inter entertainment, uh, uh, medieval. And so this really brings to mind the uh, political uh, philosopher de Tocqueville who talked about um, uh, the, the uh, civil a society and the emergence of uh, associations um, and uh, the, the sort of things that we see in guilds uh, where there's uh, informal codes that, that emerge among the citizens at the lower ends of, uh, of uh, commercial activity. Um, and the, some people have even applied this thought to, to America today where uh, if you just focus on uh, uh, the political um, uh, fights in Washington, D.C., you can get pretty depressed. But all across America, there is a civil society. Um, and, and some of them have made the argument that mayors are doing uh, more to help with the evolution of our civilization than, than Washington is. Um, so um, uh, if you want to be an optimist about America, stand on your head and look at what's going on in the community rather than in, in Washington, D.C. That, that, that is a, a hopeful, um, uh, maybe uh, uh, too hopeful uh, point of uh, view. So back to um, uh, 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 Northern Italy 
And if we look at the first university, the very first one was in Bologna, and then Modena. Um, and of all the uh, universities, you look it up, uh, six of the first 12 are, are in Italy. Um, and some of that is, uh, uh, that's where a lot of uh, learning resided. Yeah, sure, a lot of it migrated to uh, Spain and was, uh, the, the Muslims were caretaker for the ancient wisdom uh, for a long period of time. But uh, uh, many scholars uh, uh, visited uh, Spain um, and, and Cordoba and, and, and took uh, some of that knowledge and, and revivified it in, the, uh, the, in its home uh, town, uh, in its home country. Um, and so you can see that of the er early universities, this uh, big cluster in uh, northern uh, Italy, that's, that's the, the densest thing. Um, surprisingly, Oxford and Cambridge were fairly uh, early, and we'll get when we get to England, we'll we'll talk about that phenomenon. Um, for some reason, it, it, it's less dense in in uh, Germany, but we'll see at, at, uh, uh, later, centuries later, German education um, becomes very good. Uh, Southern Europe, therefore, emerges um, not India not China, but it, it, it's Europe and it's Southern Europe in, in these early uh, centuries of uh, the Renaissance. Spain has, come, has ejected the, the Muslims and they become a, a, a surprising uh, political leader for a while. We, we saw that, uh, and, and Juan Jose will remember that with the um, early discussion we had about the Habsburgs, who uh, 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 provided us with a nice flow line uh, through European history, all the, all the way up to World War I. Um, and of course, uh, they're, they're taking a, a, a very wise gamble here. Uh, it, it all depends from whose point of view you, th you think it's wise, but from their point of view, it paid off to listen to this uh, explorer with his uh, crazy plan. Um, and and uh, so as we'll talk about uh, later, the, the age of discovery, uh, they issued it in along with the Portuguese. Um, but because of, and this came up in one of the questions from lingering from last week, um, uh, uh, why why were, weren't they part of this amazing artistic opening? And it, I think it's because they were uh, coming out of being ruled for um, uh, seven centuries by, by Muslims. So they were very suspicious of any lingering Muslim uh, sympathies. And of course, they were very anti-Semitic and the Jews were uh, expelled as well, who had been a big uh, uh, part of the uh, uh, Muslim uh, uh, ruling class. Um, uh, I, I think I, I, uh, I read that uh, Jews comprised the five to 10 percent of um, a Muslim Spain. Um, so Let's focus first on the geography and, and the Po River Valley. So here it is uh, between the, the, the spine of mountains that goes down the center of uh, Italy and, and, the, and the Alps. Um, uh, Juan Jose uh, will remember uh, earlier when we were doing Rome, the Po River Valley uh, came up because we were looking at um, Hannibal and uh, his uh, campaign. Um, uh, he was based originally in Carthage, which uh, was a, a Phoenician town. The Phoenicians were uh, Semites, Semites. So uh, there's always been contention between Semites and Indo-Europeans for control of, of uh, the Mediterranean. Um, and uh, for a while, uh, they were in, in play in the, in the central and uh, western uh, 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 Mediterranean. Um, of course, they uh, 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 always have been in con control of the eastern end. Um, and uh, uh, 
uh, Hannibal uh, launched his uh, attack and went across uh, Spain and through um, uh, the, the, the extension of the Alps uh, uh, down here and emerged in, in the Po River Valley. Uh, famously came across the Alps with elephants um, and uh, bingo, they finally come out in uh, the uh, Po River uh, Valley. And this is just a, 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 a brief map of um, a less dense map showing where Torino uh, is, uh, where Milano is, where uh, uh, Modino is. Um, and uh, this is, uh, uh, shows a, is a more political map uh, to, just to introduce you to some familiar names. Uh, Where's Savoy? You, the Savoy Hotel. Well, the Savoy um, is is here in, in the western uh, uh, part of the Po uh, uh, Valley. Um, uh, Genoa uh, uh, down here. Um, they they of course were uh, big competitors in sea trade with Venice on the other end of the peninsula. Uh, uh, we've talked about uh, Modena, the first university, or uh, second university, Bologna, uh, uh, the first. Ravenna, interestingly uh, to me, uh, their university was very strong in medicine. And I think it's because of the uh, contact with the Arab um, uh, uh, scholars. Um, uh, Siena, um, uh, Luca. We have friends who settled in in Luca, uh, retired there, uh, very happily. Um, and then uh, the across uh, the Adriatic Sea um, on the uh, the the coast of the Istria uh, Peninsula, uh, you see the Republic of, of Venice spreading down. Uh, uh, south from Trieste down to um, uh, Dubrovnik, um, which some of you have seen in the Game of Thrones uh, series. A lot of it's shot in that walled city of Dubrovnik. Uh, we, our grandkids discovered this uh, uh, kind of goofy uh, 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 website uh, ca called Oversimplified. And they had a cartoon version of uh, the War of, of the Bucket. Um, which, which was a nickname given to uh, a war uh, uh, th that uh, you could argue was, was like capture the flag where they, uh, 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 the trophy was, was a bucket. But actually what the conflict was, was Modena and Bologna being ruled by early by warlords um, uh, kept exchanging uh, this, this castle. Um, Anyway, the cartoon version is very uh, entertaining uh, and our kids uh, uh, wanted to watch it over, our grandkids wanted to watch it over and over again. And you can see the, the tone that uh, it, it sets. Um, so it was a painless uh, way to introduce them to, to history. Uh, and you even had um, on, on uh, uh, YouTube uh, history professors weighing in on the pluses and minuses of approaching history through the War of the Bucket. So on to the uh, Italian uh, uh, city-states um, uh, across uh, uh, crossroads, uh, uh, connections to, to the Silk Road, and also to Northern uh, Europe, it was only natural that uh, banking was going to uh, uh, develop uh, there. You had the, the papal states that down in uh, uh, continuing the tradition of the, the power of the church, both uh, uh, religious and, and secular, uh, which uh, certainly interfered with any um, uh, urges for uh, uh, nationalism. Um, and uh, uh, th this constant trade between uh, North and South uh, with uh, Italy uh, and the uh, uh, Italian city-states being mid good middlemen uh, meant a lot of uh, profit. We remember from the time of Charlemagne's grandson that there was a, a, a cultural uh, connection uh, between Northern uh, Italy and all the way up to uh, 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 the Low Countries. Um, 
And as, as some of that tradition, uh, no doubt, was on ships because there are Alps here, there are, are mountains. Um, but that did exist for a long period of time. And uh, the renewal uh, at the end of uh, the Middle Ages uh, maybe was simplified by that. So it's interesting, the derivation of the word bank uh, in, in uh, Latin or, uh, or Italian that meant bench. Uh, and so a bench was where uh, the money changers sat in the, in the early days. And as money changing became more and more complex, it moved inside off of a bench to, to buildings, but they still called it um, a bank. Um, and uh, one of the uh, leading uh, bankers, of course, is uh, 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 we're going to find in, in uh, Florence. We, we had a little taste of it when Carol gave her talk on uh, the, uh, Da Vinci's uh, early uh, days. Um, and uh, the, the uh, uh, city was broken down into to classes. The old rich, which are basically the original warlords who have called themselves uh, nobles, um, but the new rich uh, the, uh, that we're talking about, the the bankers, the the capitalists, um, and then uh, we're going to end up talking about the people that really created a unique culture, uh, the artisans that came out of the tradition of of the guild. Uh, the guild is going to yield the the workshop. Uh, that Carol talked about that uh, 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 gave Da Vinci uh, uh, his, his uh, in, informal training. He never had like a formal education as we, as we uh, would, would know it. Um, the uh, leading banker was uh, Cosimo de, de Medici and uh, he wound up controlling the um, uh, elections. There were uh, elections, um, and, uh, but uh, it, it, like in most city states, uh, the, there, there were oligar an oligarchy evolved uh, that manipulated uh, that. So he wasn't the, the last to do the, that. And his grandson is Lorenzo, um, who was total to, uh, totalitarian, but also, uh, as, as we will learn uh, later, um, a uh, uh, sponsor of, of the arts um, uh, patron. Um, and um, so here's Florence. I, I kind of like this map. I know it's a little bit busy, but it gives a nice color cl coding on how the influence of Florence expanded from, from this pinkish area uh, out and around. You see Florence is uh, uh, cut off from the Po Valley by these uh, mountains. Um, and uh, uh, Da Vinci, when he traveled from Florence uh, to uh, Milano had, had to pass through uh, uh, the, these mountains. Um, and then we move up to, okay, Milano, we're here. And the color coding goes from uh, the original area of influence, the, the orange to an ever expanding uh, uh, level inf influence under the, the Visconti uh, family in the early years. Um, Milano uh, had a military uh, tradition being located where it was. It was on a kind of a crossroads and it had to um, uh, develop a, a military. Um, Viscontes were originally uh, warlords. Um, uh, and uh, they had what they called a battle wagon which they rolled into battle and you can uh, see it in the depictions of some of their, their famous uh, battles. This is the battle of uh, Legnano in 1176. So we're talking about the early years of the, how did uh, Milano get its independence? And it, they took advantage of uh, the investiture controversy that we talked about earlier where the popes and, and, and the, the, the kings, the monarchs uh, argued about who should be allowed to uh, appoint the local uh, bishops. You all remem remember that. And while they were, were quarreling, uh, the Holy Roman Emperor and the king of, 
uh, 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 France uh, were quibbling about that, uh, uh, Milano said this would be a good time to declare independence. And they, they fought a, a battle uh, 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 and, uh, uh, and they, they won their independence and they gradually over time created something called the uh, Lombard uh, League that expanded and expanded um, in, in the uh, early uh, years that, uh, uh, before the, the emergence of the full uh, city uh, states. Um, so uh, the Viscontes yielded to the Sforzas um, and uh, Carol talked about this uh, uh, family uh, that passed uh, 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 military power really uh, from father to son. They were warlords uh, initially. Um, and uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, Sforza was in charge when uh, da Vinci uh, arrived as, as Carol told us. And uh, uh, da Vinci was looking for a patron and he found it in the Sforza. And when we visited Milan, uh, the, the word Sforza was very strange and new to us, but by the time, by the end of our visit, it had become very familiar. Um, so uh, they, they initially uh, uh, were warlords um, and uh, there were a lot of uh, mercenaries uh, uh, floating around and they were called condottieri. Um, and this is Francesco uh, with whom uh, da Vinci um, uh, uh, negotiated. Um, finally, just to uh, uh, see how this all settles out, uh, uh, the con consolidation of, of political power uh, and, you, and you get the Duchy of uh, uh, Milano, uh, uh, Medino, um, uh, Genoa, uh, Florence, uh, Siena. The papal states are all, all down here being uh, 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 ruled directly from, from uh, Rome. Um, and when we talk about Michelangelo, we'll talk more about, about Rome, but I'm not gonna say much about Rome uh, now. Um, uh, one area I've always been interested, where is Assisi in all this? Well, they're, they're way down in the, in the, the mountains uh, here. Uh, we know of it and have an interest here uh, because of uh, uh, the big city named after St. Francis um, and uh, Giotto's uh, paintings. The other part on this map I want to point out way over here is Dubrovnik. So this is where Dubrovnik is now. This, is, this uh, Istria Peninsula now belongs to, to Croatia and shares it with, with Bosnia. Uh, in the Balkans. Um, and this is a, a St. Francis tomb, just a little uh, uh, sidelight here because of our uh, local interest in St. Saint, Saint Francis. Uh, and a famous painting by uh, Giotto on St. Francis uh, tutoring the Pope with, with his uh, uh, new thoughts of uh, how the church uh, should, should be run. Um, the um, uh, Venice uh, is, uh, emerges uh, and they follow the, the, the blueprint. They initially have a, a Senate and, and a council of 10, a judicial body, but um, over time uh, they uh, become uh, uh, despotic. Uh, just like uh, uh, most other places. Um, and uh, they have the, the Doge, uh, um, who uh, was more a figurehead, the, the, the true rulers ruled from behind uh, the, the uh, uh, governing chair. And here is the, uh, a, a look at uh, uh, the uh, Venice's control um, uh, again focusing on, on that. And way down south is, is Dubrovnik. Uh, it had another name er, early on, um, uh, which is, is very con confusing, but all this territory was controlled by, by Venice. 
Ramsey, uh, hearing that I was going to be talking about Venice and uh, as uh, uh, Italian city-state stages, wanted to be sure I uh, uh, emphasized that Venice uh, made a lot of money in the slave trade um, and the, uh, white slavery, um, especially uh, from uh, the steppes, uh, southern Russia. Um, and also um, African-American slaves. And when you, you, God bless the internet, you go on, you wanna find out more information about that. There's a whole book on um, uh, how uh, uh, blacks uh, uh, lived in uh, the Renaissance Venice. Uh, and so a lot of them were, were, were boatmen. Uh, there's a famous picture where uh, this uh, 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 African, um, uh, stands out um, also in the lagoons, uh, steering the boats, retrieving relics, not sure. And a, a, a wider map shows uh, Venice dabbling uh, uh, near Constantinople. You know, this is when at least uh, uh, Constantinople it, it was still its own city. But Venice interfered uh, a lot as an independent uh, power in, in Greece, um, uh, in Crete, in Cyprus. They, they, were, they were all over the place. Now, there's one group of people I want to introduce that was on their southeast uh, border. Um, and it's a new group. They're called the Mamluks. When we went to Egypt and you read the history of Egypt, it was very puzzling. They were, they were a slave class um, that actually took over and ruled Egypt for uh, two and a half uh, centuries. Um, and uh, what, what happened on the Silk Road, the Arabs controlled it, then the Mongols came, the Mongols devastated Baghdad. Um, uh, sent the Arabs running back to, to the Mediterranean, really. Uh, and then uh, we had the wave of Turks that we've been talking about, the Altaic uh, people, but both Mongols and, and, and Turks are finally coming down from, from the steppes. Instead of coming down in waves and, ra and raiding, they're coming down and, and they're staying. And the Mamluks were originally Turkish warriors who were either captured um, and, uh, and, and therefore enslaved or um, ex-soldiers that just blended into the population as mercenaries. Um, as I said, they ruled Egypt during, during these years. This is when Venice was rising. And, and so Venice was dealing uh, and trading uh, through uh, Egypt, especially when uh, the Silk Road was um, a problem for them. Um, but they, they evolved and as most warlords do, they become noblemen, right? Um, but in uh, the area of the Levant, where we uh, current day Lebanon and Israel, they defeated uh, first the, the, the Mongols, then they threw out the Crusaders. They were the ones that finally uh, threw them out completely. Um, and uh, th then they even defeated uh, the Arabs who had been uh, retreating and took over control uh, of Egypt. And, and, and being a governing uh, power, they uh, uh, flirted with uh, both Venice and Persia on the, the two uh, ends um, of uh, the, the Turkish uh, uh, influence. Um, so uh, they were a party, a, 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 a party to be dealt with, they were, uh, uh, mercenaries for the for the most part, but uh, they, they uh, became an institution uh, in in Egypt. Um, uh, they threw out the uh, last Crusader city, Accra. Here they are burrowing into the walls, undermining the walls of of Accra. Um, here they are with their their complete armor. A little bit later on, pretty fearsome. 
uh, horsemen as, as well, being from the, the steppes. Um, and then um, uh, after uh, uh, the, the uh, Ottomans captured Constantinople, um, th they dealt with uh, the Mamluks as, as fellow Turks and enlisted them as their front men uh, around um, uh, the edges of, of the, the Mediterranean. Uh, so th their power persisted in, in Egypt, uh, but they were, became more the uh, uh, local representatives of the Ottomans, their, their fellow uh, Turks. Um, and um, they uh, were called into action when the Napoleon invaded uh, Egypt, just flash forwarding uh, a little bit to finish the Mamluk uh, story before we go back to the city states. Uh, so they fought and they lost against uh, Napoleon in the Battle of uh, uh, the Pyramids, which exposed the limits of their power. The, the Mamluks lost a lot of credibility with that, that loss. So uh, how did they uh, recover? They joined Napoleon. <laughs> Being mercenaries, they're able to switch sides at the drop of a hat. And they uh, uh, fought for him uh, in Austerlitz at the battle, which Napoleon won in Czechoslovakia on his way to uh, Russia. Uh, the uh, Ottomans finally uh, sent a, a, a governor, an Albanian government. The Albanians had um, uh, volunteered to work with the Ottomans. They converted to Islam. Um, uh, if you go to Albania today, as Iko and I did with Ramsey and Janet, uh, you find out that the majority of Albanians identify themselves as, uh, as Muslims. This fellow Muhammad Ali, uh, we have had a famous American who, who took that name. Uh, he uh, uh, went uh, and, and after Na uh, Napoleon uh, 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 finally left uh, for uh, strategic reasons, um, he, the Ottomans named him the governor and he took power and ma maintained uh, control for over 40 years, and he finally exterminated the, the Mamluks, at least the, the, the leaders of the Mamluks. And it was that old ruse that we, we keep seeing in Scotland and, and other places where you, you invite everybody to a big party, right? Uh, the Scottish uh, 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 lairds are, are famous for that. And then they, everybody's at the party and you have a few drinks and then somebody comes in and kills every, all the enemies that are there. Uh, and that's what he did with the Mamluks. On their way to the big uh, uh, party uh, uh, to celebrate uh, uh, a recent success, um, uh, uh, Muhammad Ali unleashed a uh, ambush and wiped out the Mamluks and you, you didn't hear about this group of mercenaries anymore. But they were, th th for over 600 years, they were players. And uh, uh, it's just, we can, uh, we can come up with uh, categories and, and think we know who's in power, but always underneath there's that red violence in the society, the police state, uh, who has the monopoly on violence, who, uh, and uh, uh, the Mamluks uh, exerted that kind of uh, uh, influence, that realm of, of raw uh, power for, for a long um, uh, period of time. And, and this, is, this is who the Venetians had to deal with um, when they were arranging uh, trade agreements. Um, uh, so mercenaries, they're, they're people from the steppes. They're no longer coming down in waves. They're just coming down and, and becoming mercenaries. So you still have that element of this uh, instability. What else happened in the uh, Italian city-states? Some very boring things like <laughs> double entry bookkeeping. All of a sudden, with a lot of banking uh, and, and, and transactions, uh, uh, th this sort of uh, uh, mathematical uh, uh, prowess becomes uh, important. And this is uh, the guy who's credited. Uh, so it's not, it, 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 it's not all 
uh, advances in, in art and, and thinking. It's also very mechanical things like a, a double entry uh, uh, bookkeeping. Here, here's an example of that. We won't, we won't tally on that. The, the main spirit of the time though is um, this, uh, an expansion of the uh, willingness to question. Uh, and we saw that uh, early on with Peter Abelard. Um, and now we're seeing it at the, the peak of the uh, early days of the Renaissance uh, with, with uh, Petrarch. And I've, I've mentioned him before when I was uh, talking about um, climbing a mountain. Um, uh, but it was, uh, he, he used climbing a mountain as a metaphor uh, uh, for um, uh, uh, the uh, individual uh, expression. And he said, so ever since our, our, our great ancestors in Greek and Roman times, uh, we, we haven't been uh, expressing ourselves and doing individual things. So it was this, this spiritual uh, shift to, to questioning, to exploring, to climbing, to looking around and he was famous for pulling out all uh, the ancient uh, 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 books and, and learning. Um, and I uh, uh, duplicated it, but I didn't walk up a mountain. Uh, I went to the top of Mount Diablo uh, to take this picture at night. And Ico had driven us up in the late afternoon, me and a, a couple of my friends from two generations younger than me in case I needed resuscitation. And uh, uh, we walked uh, uh, down and I've, I showed this before and I'm just showing you again for those that may have missed it. So Petrarch and another person I'm gonna be talking about, not today, but uh, a, a, compa a companion of, uh, uh, Petrarch is, is Erasmus. And in my mind, uh, they form a bridge um, from the, the high Middle Ages, <clears throat> from these people that we've already discussed, Abelard and Aquinas and Bacon and even Giotto, because um, uh, he was quite early on, a uh, pioneer really. Um, and uh, on the other side of the bridge is, is uh, Da Vinci and, and Dante, though Dante was very early uh, too. And in terms of, of, of the intellectual um, uh, uh, tradition. Um, and here we have the, the Florentine uh, uh, Academy. So it, uh, you, you had the artistic workshops, but you also had this tradition of, of writing and um, uh, we have to talk about uh, Dante. He was very early on. Um, this is uh, uh, Giotto's painting of, of Dante. He was immersed in uh, political uh, fighting. Uh, it was uh, the Gel uh, Gelfians versus uh, uh, the, the Gibberanis or something like that. The, the, they were just uh, didn't seem to stand for any political ideas. It was just a, a political faction uh, uh, jockeying uh, for, for power. And it got so ridiculous that there were white Gelfians uh, versus black Gelfians. But in any case, the Gelfians were anti-Pope. And so that might be the one issue that they'd line up on. How much are we gonna uh, uh, listen to what the Pope has uh, to say? This is... Uh, uh, a fresco of Dante uh, in Florence. Uh, this is in the uh, Uffizi uh, in Florence. Dante, Dante, big, big impact. Uh, the way he uh, uh, was thinking, um, uh, statues, uh, and how was he thinking? So he finally got tired of politics and fled to uh, Verona. Uh, and started doing some writing, finally came up with the, the Divine uh, Comedy, one of the great um, uh, uh, works of literature. Um, and uh, it's divided into th uh, three parts and he uh, uh, somehow uh, uh, calls forth this, the spirit of, of Virgil to lead him on, on a tour uh, for the, the first part of uh, the three-part series. 
first they they go to to hell um, uh, and and see and examine who had who went to hell and why. Uh, interestingly, uh, he found uh, Muhammad there. Uh, so uh, there was a little bit of uh, 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 side taking in the politics and, uh, uh, and international politics of the time. Uh, the second part, he's in, in purgatory, looking at people waiting uh, to, the, to see what's going to happen uh, to them. Uh, and he's, he's there with Virgil and they question people. Uh, awaiting their turn up the, the uh, spiral of, of, uh, of purgatory. So he's examining uh, in detail the, uh, what, the, what the church has, uh, their model that they've put forth. Um, and is he questioning it? Yeah, in very subtle ways, he is. He's dealing, he's dealing with uh, church um, theology uh, and uh, openly uh, uh, making, bringing it to, uh, to life outside of the Bible. Uh, in the third part, uh, in a search for paradise, uh, uh, the guide becomes uh, uh, Beatrice, this, this uh, uh, ephemeral uh, presence, this, uh, as some people would say, uh, uh, maybe, um, uh, uh, un un unattainable uh, beauty uh, that, that would be almost uh, ro romantic. Um, and Beatrice uh, leads him, though, uh, to try to find a spiritual uh, paradise. So he sublimates whatever uh, feelings he has for this unrequited uh, love into this, this spiritual searching, and he thinks he can see uh, heaven and, and, and paradise uh, uh, he, as he envisions it. Um, but uh, so, so he's, he's trying to make manifest, uh, what is this thing uh, uh, called uh, heaven? That, that, is, that is really uh, exploration and questioning uh, at, a, at, a, at its core. And he dares even to imagine and see the face of God. That's new. No, nobody's talked about the face of, of, of God before. That, that's audacious. And that's uh, typical of the new spirit that we're going to encounter that's probably at the root of the rise of, of the West. And of course, the face of God is very familiar to us on the top of the Sistine uh, Chapel, which Tina uh, we'll be talking about. That's in, in Rome, so uh, we're not going to get there uh, until we're finished with the, the northern city-states. This is from the movie The Agony and the Ecstasy, where uh, Michelangelo uh, finally gets inspiration for what he wants to do in the Sistine Chapel. I thought it was amusing to see that. Um, the, the other uh, goofy uh, spinoffs from that is, is the um, uh, commercialization of uh, uh, the, the divine comedy. <laughs> and here somebody's trying to sell meat extract based on uh, using uh, Beatrice. Uh, <laughs> and I, I don't know if you all remember El Postino, uh, but uh, the director, uh, he had his own Beatrice, so he was kind of channeling Dante. Um, it was uh, 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 involved the um, Latin uh, American poet Neruda, but it was an Italian uh, 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 production, um, and her name was Beatrice. This this guy, you can tell he, he's pretty thin. He he died. That got the Academy Award, but he died uh, b between when the movie came out and the award ceremony. Um, he I think he had really bad tuberculosis. Um, this is Dante's uh, death mask. His lingering uh, influence was made possible by this guy. So on top of all this and all this uh, this new thinking comes a new way to broadcast um, thinking. This is Gutenberg. This is Gutenberg. Now he doesn't live in Northern Italy, but um, what he invents is gonna spread 
uh, everywhere and spread the ideas that are coming up in Northern Italy far and wide. So he discovers it here, uh, puts it together here in 1448. So we're, we're dealing with stuff before 1500. That's gonna be the end of our, our current time period. But look how, how quickly uh, it spreads um, uh, uh, all over, basically, uh, uh, this new technology. Now, not as fast as the internet spread, but uh, consider the, the time. Uh, this was an amazing uh, development. The Chinese had the technology, they just didn't have the, the language that could uh, 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 translate, given that they would, instead of 26 letters, they'd had to have, to have 2,000 uh, at least. Uh, and, and it wasn't, it wasn't going to work. But with 26 letters, the, the, uh, uh, or thereabouts, the, uh, the language uh, and the ideas could take off. And the ideas were coming from uh, uh, northern uh, Italy, from the, the, uh, the city states. Uh, as important as uh, what, what was happening here is the fall of Constantinople. That's going to change events. That is the point of, of this slide. Uh, but here's the, an early replica of Gutenberg's uh, uh, printing press. Then it, it, it ad advances. Um, you get the, 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 the Bible uh, being available uh, all around. Um, uh, you see within 50 years, 110 uh, towns had their own uh, uh, printing press and 60 million books had been published by 1500, our cutoff date. Um, and then we'll get into the vernacular and uh, uh, when we get past 1500, because we're going to get into the Reformation and uh, uh, the Martin Luther story then. But the uh, 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 printing press takes off ju just a, a huge um, part of the explanation of why the West rose so quickly and India and China didn't. Um, an interesting point is the um, Ottoman Empire deliberately postponed the introduction of the printing press in their realms for over 200 years because the ulama, their uh, uh, religious class, thought it would be dangerous uh, to their power uh, to have other people reading the Quran and questioning uh, their pronouncements. And they were right, <laughs> that would have. Uh, so they, mean, they held on to power um, and uh, the Catholic Church as in religion, as we're going to see um, uh, in the West, did suffer uh, because of the spread of, of, of the printing uh, press. But uh, it only advanced something that was, was inevitable and, and put Western Europe on the uh, uh, fast track uh, to dominance in, in many other realms. Um, and uh, all classes, um, the printing shop became a place for people to congregate. Da Vinci uh, had some ideas for improving it, as seen in this sketch. Um, and we know in America how important it was, uh, the publication of common uh, uh, sense um, uh, aided the uh, 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 American uh, Revolution uh, big time. Um, Benjamin Franklin uh, uh, was a, a printer. Uh, and then spreading ideas throughout all classes in uh, uh, Western Europe. So now uh, you get a guy, Shakespeare, uh, writing a play and, and uh, the, the, the influence um, flows all across Europe. A lot of his early plays involved uh, are, are, are situated in, in Northern Italy at the time of, of uh, uh, the Renaissance. The two gentlemen uh, from Verona, this being an example. And just think of all the plays, the uh, Shakespeare plays where there's uh, some sort of uh, duke that uh, is the temporal power uh, in, involved. 
uh, so uh, the, the, the model of the Italian city state uh, had an in influence uh, all the way uh, to Stratford on, on Avon. And then curiously, uh, uh, random uh, uh, times, you hear of Italians popping up in, in English uh, history. Um, and I just remembered how odd it was that Mary, Queen of Scots, had an Italian uh, private secretary. Man, he went from uh, Northern Italy, which was probably rough and tumble, uh, but he had no idea what was waiting for him in, in, with the, the political powers in Scotland. Uh, and he was assassinated um, by the Scottish uh, lairds. Um, just an example of Italian uh, 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 influence spreading uh, throughout um, uh, Europe. And now we're, we're, we're coming down to um, the uh, other advances of the Italian city-states, uh, they developed the art of uh, 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 ambassadors and having embassies around, uh, dealing with, with people like the uh, Mamluks, uh, and the flourishing of the arts. This is of where we're going to be moving to at our, our next uh, uh, session. Uh, and, and why? And a lot of it was for uh, prestige. Uh, competition and money. Um, and uh, we're going to uh, use uh, Da Vinci as a bridge between Florence uh, to, to uh, Milano. Uh, remember, he started off in a workshop. Um, now, this happens to be a sculptures workshop, but there were painting workshops uh, as well uh, in Florence. And this was in the guild uh, tradition. And the artists were, were competing um, uh, for the uh, uh, approval and favor of, of, of the reigning uh, powers, the bankers, they had the money. Uh, and this is uh, uh, the, the end of uh, uh, Carol's lecture. Um, I, I'm taking the liberty, Carol, of, of putting it up just to say we covered all, I've, I've stolen all of your points and put them, embedded them uh, uh, in the lecture. So you gave us uh, a head start. Um, and what we're uh, going to see uh, uh, next time, I think I'm, uh, uh, okay, I'm going to go ahead and just finish this part real quick. Um, what we're going to do next time is a, a look at the, uh, the art uh, specifically. Um, Eichel is going to do uh, uh, Florence. Um, uh, Carol is going to take uh, uh, Michelangelo in Florence, one work of art. Uh, and then uh, uh, I, I think, uh, I'm sorry, Tina is going to do that. Uh, Carol is going to do uh, Milano, and then we'll we'll uh, move on to Michelangelo, uh, uh, what he did in Florence, and what he did in Rome. So that'll be a bridge to to uh, Rome that Tina will do for us. Uh, so that's what's ahead. My summary is um, uh, the uh, individualism that we see uh, developing. And it's going to lead to the Reformation, and it doesn't happen in China, and it doesn't happen in, in India. Uh, and it's, it, it was allowed for by Christianity with the, with the Reformation uh, and with these, these critical thinkers. Uh, we, we've seen the, the, the rise of um, economic power with the north-south uh, trade and, and the use of um, the Mongol uh, peace, Venice used that very well. Uh, the Mongols were the easiest people at once they set up uh, their way stations on the Silk Road uh, uh, to deal with. Um, and um, uh, we're seeing at the end, uh, the Ottomans coming in, Columbus uh, doing his thing. We're about ready to see Martin Luther and we've talked about when we were doing the high middle ages, um, the, the church and how it transitioned. And we went through this full list, uh, but now we're in the early modern period. 
And some historians prefer early modern, modern to the word Renaissance. Um, uh, uh, they think Renaissance is uh, uh, overworked and leaves too much out. Um, but it, the, the church uh, is no longer the central part. The town may use the church uh, for, for celebrations, but it's, it, it's the guilds and, and the, it's the workshops um, uh, that, that, are, that are doing the beautiful things. Not anonymous uh, 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 Gothic church builders, um, and uh, the artisans are, are working as individuals and, and being identified, whereas they were all anonymous uh, in the early days. Uh, yeah, we're talking about the upper classes. The lower classes are, are, are still um, suffering. Some of them may still believe just as much in the old time um, uh, uh, religion. Um, and uh, but uh, you can see what I've just, I've been talking about the, the, this whole hour, the, the growth of uh, entrepreneurship, the wealth of towns, uh, and the shift from just the spiritual acceptance to the way things uh, the church and the Pope said they were to uh, a profane sensibility, uh, just questioning uh, everything. And this is the guy um, that's waiting for us on the other end when we're done with all the beautiful art. This is uh, Martin Luther who took advantage of the printing press uh, to spread his ideas. And here he is taking the fatal step where he challenges the, the Pope himself. Um, and so, um, uh, I am going to stop and open it up for uh, uh, questions. So, John, this is Irene. I, when I was listening to you talking about the beginnings of Europe's rise, and all the parts of the individualism and artistic expression, et cetera, et cetera. So the Chinese and the both India and China were left out of that progression. And so the part that was a little confusing to me was I didn't understand in China and India, they certainly had a lot of artists, but they, they were, is that correct that they were controlled, for instance, in China by the mandarins? Is that why the, their rise is not so important? Well, it's, it, it, it's interesting. In China, the artists were mandarins. Uh, we got an echo somewhere, huh? Uh, the, the artists were mandarin. There was very little done outside of that elite class. Okay. Um, in, uh, I think in India, it was like uh, the building of the- uh, Irene, I think that, Irene, put yourself on mute. I think it, there you Okay, now we'll test it. Oh, Irene, it looks like it, you, you have to put yourself on mute when you're not talking, sorry. <laughs> um, so uh, in, in China, the uh, mandarins were the artists. Uh, the, 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 it wasn't like there was an artistic uh, uh, class. Uh, and it was be, because of who they were, it was very, very refined. Um, I think in India, it, it was like uh, 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 the high middle ages where uh, you were building all these amazing uh, temples uh, but the artists were anonymous, like, like they were in the Gothic uh, cathedrals. We don't know who, who they were um, because they were building it for, for a higher good. They, they didn't have that, that, that individualism. I'm certainly not an expert on, on China and India. I'm sure Ramsey could answer that. And I'll, I'll ask him that question this week sometime. Because it, it see, I mean, there was a certain amount of dissension among amongst the mandarins, in the, like you pointed out about Li Bo, that he's he has a certain amount of criticism of 
what's going on and who's in power and all that stuff. But it's that it's not disseminated artistic expression or cultural expression or expansion. Yeah, I think that too. Yeah, I think I think it, it was it, they they never had the means of uh, wide dissemination of uh, uh, works of art like uh, people could read Dante's Inferno and they could read their their, their own version of the Bible and uh, that that didn't happen uh, in these other places. But they did have the printing press in China. Yep, but they didn't have the alphabet. The, 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 uh, they, they didn't have the, uh, the, the uh, Easy. They, did, they didn't have the, the kind of la language that was suited for the printing press. For, for mass printing, let, let's put it that way. Right, I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I think in China they, they just, I thought they were saying that the, it was so difficult to um, print because of the characters that, that they didn't really use that. Right, they had too many. Yeah. <laughs> they had too many. So, you know, you can use 26 little things like I did in um, uh, middle school. We took shop and we had the uh, set type. And, you know, you're working just with 26 letters. Uh, and that was hard enough to set type, uh, but you get 2,000 and, and maybe uh, your typesetter can't understand all of them, so you get all these uh, misprints. <laughs> uh, it would have been, uh, yeah, it was just a, a, um, a, a mechanical problem, really. It's just the way that, like, now, uh, Chinese alphabet has other advantages. We know that their pro poetry can go to dimensions that our poetry can't, uh, just using calligraphy and the characters on, in calligraphy. Um, but in terms of mass communication of new, simpler ideas, not the ephemeral ones that you need for that, that are best captured with 2000 characters and uh, uh, calligraphy is another means of emphasizing them. Uh, the, you have simpler ideas, the, the uh, 26 letter alphabet and thank you Phoenicians, you know, that was, that was their uh, Semitic contribution to, to uh, uh, the rise of the, uh, uh, West. Also, doesn't China have just geographically? There's so many, so many geographical barriers because doesn't like there's so many different dialects that people geographically in closer proximity just don't communicate because they've they've got geographical barriers. Well, th this is, points to another advantage of uh, Chinese. So. Um, when, when you can't understand the spoken dialect, you can take out uh, or, or, or just bend down with your finger in the dirt and draw the character. Now, you don't need 2,000 characters to uh, say, I'd like a room for tonight, <laughs> or uh, can I have a cup of tea? Right, you you can you can get that message across using uh, the basic characters. I think at at one point I heard that three hundred characters would get you pretty far, uh, and and a lot of people could could master that. So yeah, uh, that 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 though uh, the uh, having so many bears and having so many. Uh, 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 river valleys and, and uh, creating many uh, different dialects um, uh, uh, was a huge problem in China, but the, 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 the written language, the ideograms could overcome those because they all had, uh, they weren't relying on phonetic spe spelling. I think also, oh, am I? no, I'm not. Um, I think also, as you said, Christianity and individualism really made a difference because Christianity 
emphasize that every man can have a relationship with God. You didn't need any of the in-between guys, you know? And so that really gave each person a real importance, you know, and you could feel like you could do anything really, you know, and you're still important even if you were a peasant. Uh, well, and, and, and I, it, Buddhism does too, remember? And the, uh, Buddhism was uh, a reform movement of Hinduism, much like uh, uh, Martin Luther and the Reformation was a reform movement of Catholicism. You know, you, uh, you become old and corrupt, you're not changing with the times. And Buddhism uh, 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 was in control for a few centuries in, in India. But then uh, Hinduism and the Brahmins re-exerted their, their power around the year 500. Um, and um, Buddhism now lives on mostly in Asian countries, in East Asia, in, in, as, we've, as we saw in China. Um, I, I, there was just an article this week about Guan Yin, the, the, the goddess of, of, of compassion that, that is uh, everywhere um, uh, from uh, gigantic statues to restaurants uh, when you walk in. Um, and uh, the, the, this idea of uh, the individual's relationship to nirvana um, uh, it is, it is very uh, appealing um, and is a, a, a nice escape valve um, uh, for, for people that maybe are bristling under uh, the control of the state, which is why uh, Xi Jinping uh, 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 says Buddhism is his favorite religion. <laughs> I think to appeal to the women, right? Guan Yin is the, the, the female goddess. And that's kind of an interesting idea that in such a patriarchal society, you have the, this female, powerful female religious figure. Yeah, I, I, I think it's compensation. Ah. <laughs> uh. Irene, you're, you're muted. We can hear you have something to say. It's recognition of the women's power <laughs> as opposed to just compensation. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, folks. Um, thank you all. Oh, I see I've got a chat. I'll, uh, I'll see what the chat is. Who said that? Oh, please mute everyone. <laughs> well, a little, a little bit late. I, to expect me to during while I'm uh, uh, talking to do something as sophisticated as muting everybody is a bridge too far. <laughs> These maps were really fantastic. The maps were 